the main page. Concept behind the main page is when composing, I wanted a single page that could feature about 90 plus percent of all the parameters I normally use. Now you can go to more complex synthesis via these tabs, but let's talk about the main page. So in the upper left, we have oscillator, volume, and pan, fairly obvious. We have a mod wheel off and on button. When on, whatever is in the destination right now cut off, and that's what all the patches default to, the mod wheel can affect the cutoff. So if I play this saw patch with the filter all the way down, it sounds like this. Now if I move the mod wheel, the filter will open up. Okay, we have a similar feature with aftertouch that you can turn on over here. Same pull down menu, same kind of amount. Now while sustaining, if I press down, the filter will open up. Okay, so moving on, we have the ADSR. So let me turn the filter up. If I turn the attack up, slower. Add more release. We have an ADSR for the filter. Works in a similar manner. So if, with the envelope at zero, this has no effect. But if I turn the envelope up, the attack up, now the filter will slowly open up. Okay, so the decay, sustain, and release affect it in a similar manner. So we have the cutoff filter down here. We have the menu for the filter shapes. Resonance, we talked about the envelope. Distortion type and amount. So we can turn up the distortion. Okay, and then over here we have a fixed low pass and high pass. So much of the time I have a patch that's say too thick. I want to thin it out. These are at the end of the signal path so I can thin it out. Really easy or take some top end off. So down here is where it kind of gets fun. We have the motion. So we have a fixed LFO that's fixed to the volume and pan. So let's talk about the pan first. So we have a rate uh, which is always syncs to a known amount so it's set to quarter. Uh, the shape of the filter shape that we can choose from the pull down menu and the amount. So as I turn the amount up the pan will start. To move. Okay so the same concept with the volume here it's set to a pulse. A uh, quarter note we'll set it to eighth note and here's the amount. So now we turn on this. Now it starts sounding interesting. So let's turn these off, talk about the master section real quick. So we have a bypass for the layers because each patch actually has two layers. Layer two is usually off by default, but if the patch starts with a 2L dash, that means it's made up of two synth layers. So we have a master volume that's independent of the oscillator volume. You have octave, coarse, and fine tuning. We have a MP button that turns off and on the MIDI play button, which we'll talk about in another video. Uh, arpeggiator button, which is kind of obvious. And you have an octave that you can turn, affects the arpeggiation. We have a glide and mono button. We have a unison button that basically can take the patch and make it, you know, between two to eight copies, and then you can detune them and make it really thick. So here's five detune versus one. And then what else do we have? Okay, we have the quick controls down at the bottom. So these are important that if we have a two layer patch, you can control the volume of layer one and layer two. You can control the attack and release of both layers at the same time or you can affect the filter of both layers at the same time. And then we have this cool motion thing uh, knob here. Now it'll affect every LFO step filter or step LFO user envelope that all create some sort of pulsing or motion. Everything but the pan. The pan's independent. But if you have a bunch of pulsing going on on both layers, you can go from all the way on to all the way off with this control. Now I said the pan's independent, but you can bring in and out the pulsing. Okay, so what's left is we have delay, mix, and reverb mix. And that is pretty much the main page.